Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about a new public community pastebin that uses AES encryption, which is symmetric encryption. When you have symmetric encryption, something like one of the combinations of these at the top, AES encryption, standing for Advanced Encryption Standard, uses a single key for both the encryption and the decryption process. And what this pastebin offers is a Tor hidden service. As you can see at the top, it's a dot onion address. Now, a Tor hidden service, the benefit there is it encrypts the data in transit. So before the data ever reaches the internet, that data is encrypted anytime it's on a dot onion address. For the pastebin server itself, the Tor client on here keeps the data encrypted before it ever reaches the internet on this side. But no point in time can that data be man in the middle because the onion address itself makes up the public key and of course that onion address is not able to be changed wherein a man in the middle attack would require something like the actual key changing. And of course if the onion address changes, which it cannot, that would be the only way for that to happen. And since it can't change, a man in the middle attack is not possible. The rest of the benefits include having the encryption storage. So the server itself, it uses private bin, a zero knowledge, zero knowledge being that even the host of the paste bin itself can't read the data. The data itself uses that AES encryption to store the data on the server itself. So not only is the data encrypted in transit, it's also stored encrypted you can also set it to burn after reading. So in this example message, this is a secret code number. Say we only want one person to be able to read it. Now what's the benefit here? Burn after reading, selecting this, means that after a single person reads it, the message self-destructs. One of the great benefits of using this feature is if the wrong person, say somebody intercepted a message somehow, some way. Well, having set it to burn after reading means that the person who is intended for would see that the message was already destroyed. For example, let's go ahead and read that. Once you hit send, it creates the address for you. And then you simply copy this here. And when you copy that, you're able to then send that message to someone. Not only can you use a link, you can also see this QR code, you can right click on this and save the image and send that to your recipient. And by doing that, you're able to send it as a QR code where they can then scan it and then receive the encrypted message. That is another great feature here. And I do suggest if you have a message that is meant to only be seen by one person to implement a password. And we'll go ahead and first show how the burn after reading works. So I go ahead and open that message and I am the only person, as you can see, it just decrypted the message and displayed it in my browser. Now, once I try to reload this page, the message will be gone. This can be a great benefit if you want to ensure that only one person can read it since it self-destructs after the first read. And if you were to see that a message had already been read, you would then want to inspect and make sure nothing funny was going on. So next, let's take a look at reloading the message. As you can see, it says it could not grab the paste data. And that's because we had it set to burn after reading. Because it was set to burn after reading, that means that only the first person who gets that loaded is going to be able to view it. Now let's go ahead and hit create a new message. At this point, we might want multiple people to receive a message. At this point, we could then set a password. Say we want to set up a chat location online, an encrypted chat location, and we don't want anyone to see it. Or for example, let's say we want to share our public key for our PGP encryption. We don't want that in email or some other thing that we may not fully trust. So we can then send it as an encrypted pastebin message. We can simply attach it to the actual node itself. And then we could even set a password 
go to my key, go to export, and then I'll hit save. And the key now is saved. So what I would do next is I'll simply go to documents, then I'll do copy this here. Someone mentioned this. They said, well, you don't want to email your public key because of the fact that emails, for example, are in general scanned on a broad scale. Well, providers a lot of times do keep an eye on their users. For example, Google used to actually scan emails and sell information to advertisers. They say they don't do this anymore, but you just don't know what email providers do what. So you just have to keep in mind that any online service that you're using could be doing things outside the realm of what is explained in the privacy policy. So we go ahead and copy that public key. We want to send it to a friend. We simply paste it in here and then at this point if we want to send it to multiple people we could even open a public discussion. We could set a password here and do that. But if we only wanted one recipient to receive it we could set it to burn after reading. And if it was a temporary key, or we just in general wanted to make sure that wasn't stored on the server long, we'd simply change the expiration. We could have it only stay on the server for an hour, for a day, or forever if we hit never. And not only that, we can also attach it as a file. So say I want to attach my key as a file and send it to someone, I would simply go to the actual key itself RTP pub, go to open, and then it will attach it as a file. Next, I hit send, and it'll simply create a link for me to share. At this point, all I have to do is share it with the intended recipient, and as you can see, it has an attachment here. And all you'd have to do at that point is the recipient would just hit download and they'd have my public key. So that's an anonymous and discreet way you can share and it is welcome for everyone to use. And if you're interested in hosting your own paste bin, you can actually go to the uh, private bin page, which I have a link to right here, or if you're interested and you want to support my work, I actually include private bin on the supporter image and you can get that at https colon slash slash buymeacoffee.com slash politictech slash extras and it also comes with nextcloud as a tour hidden service where the login screen looks like this it also has a torified wi-fi router so you can have all of this and more Everyone who gets it, I do send a new download link when I add new updates to the image and new features. So I'll be doing that. So if you're interested in that, check it out. If you want to support my work, go to buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. If you want to try this pastebin, go ahead and check it out. I have it all at the front page of the blog here. So if you want to learn more about encryption, you want to learn more about security privacy, check it out over at the front page of the tutorials in the blog. And if you want to support my work, there's ways you can do that there. Uh, but the link to the encrypted onion tour hidden service pastebin is found right on the front page at buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. And if you have any questions on how to use this and how you might be able to benefit from using this zero knowledge 256 bit AES encryption pastebin, make sure to leave a comment, share this video, and I will be back later with more on how to protect your privacy.